Spoiler alert, the oldest land animals on the planet are millipedes. And I already know what some of you are thinking. Ah, oh, you're talking about millipedes? Yawn. No. No. Do you think I would make millipedes one of my first long form videos if I didn't have outrageous information to share with you? I have a lot to say. I'm going to introduce you to some of the earliest millipedes as well as some of the most badass species that are alive today. As always, let's get the quick facts out of the way. Millipedes are arthropods. They've got exoskeletons and a lot of legs. They appear all over the world except for polar regions and have been featured in a few of my skits, including my most popular No Bone Zone. Mmm, this looks nice. No! You can't be up here! Why? Do you have bones? Yeah. Get out. What? You have bones. You're not welcome here. This is a no bone zone! They said get out. Do you have ears? No, I don't. No bone zone! It's a no bone zone! You have bones and this is a no bone zone! Well, I want to be up here. The ocean is boring and I want to try something new. Read my lips! It's a no bone zone! Well, what are you made out of? Aren't we the same thing? Do not compare my exoskeleton with your fucking bones! Go back to where you came from. This is a no bone zone. Make me. Shit. Millipedes belong to the class Diplopoda. They are so vast, they have their own class. To put that in perspective, all reptiles belong to the same class Reptilia. Sidebar, I'm thinking of doing a video on taxonomic rank just to provide an understanding of how scientists classify different organisms. So if you're interested in that, let me know. So within the millipede class, there are over 12,000 species that we know of. And of course, thousands more that we haven't discovered yet. But 12,000 is still a really big number. That's more than twice the amount of mammals on the planet. I mean, it's nothing on the beetles. 25% of all discovered animal species are beetles but that's a topic for another day. And this does not include centipedes, by the way. They have their own separate class called Chylopoda. The main difference between the two is that centipedes have one pair of legs per segment and millipedes have two pairs of legs per segment, generally. I don't want to make a sweeping statement across the board because nature would just swing back around and kick my ass. But both centipedes and millipedes belong to a larger group called the myriapods. And so the amount of legs a millipede has has nothing to do with what their name translates to. Millipede means a thousand feet, but generally they have somewhere between 24 to 750 legs. Generally, just wait. So obviously since appearing about 420 million years ago, millipedes have diversified into abysmal forms of all sizes. But before we get into that, I wanna paint a picture of what the world was like during the time that they evolved. The Silurian period, starting 443 million years ago. Earth was unrecognizable to how we know it today. Life was almost entirely restricted to the oceans where ecosystems looked downright alien. The apex predators of the time were giant sea scorpions like Pteragotus that could get to six feet long. There are also creatures like Solacina Cthulhu that had 45 tentacle-like feet. And there were fishes, but really just the precursors to the fish that we know today. Jaws had only just started evolving, so most of them were jawless, like lampreys and hagfish are today. And there were a few familiar faces too, like coral reefs and sponges and jellyfish. And horseshoe crabs came into the mix then as well. So, life in the oceans was doing pretty well. So it's not surprising that a few brave lineages started to venture onto land, which was a massive undertaking. I mean, gravity sucks up here and it's dry as fuck. Plants had already begun their journey millions of years prior and were finally really starting to take root. <laughs> With the new development of stems. It wasn't anything crazy. The stems were like a few centimeters tall, but it was a step in the right direction that would eventually lead to the towering trees that we know today. Yeah. Trees didn't exist yet. But that doesn't mean there weren't other organisms that kept the seat warm for them while they figured their shit out. The giant fungus called Prototaxites. They are always a fun time to bring up on TikTok, you sick, sick freaks. These fungal towers could get to 26 feet tall. I believe at one point, scientists suggested they might've had that mushroom top, which would have been really cool. But I think gravity and the lack of fossil evidence removed that possibility, unfortunately. And these Silurian skyscrapers looked even more massive to the only animals on land at the time, like the millipedes, who currently hold the record for the first animals on land, a body fossil of a species called Pneumodesmus numini found in Scotland. Shit gets a little muddy here, to be honest, and their record holding status is on fragile ground. Because the fossil record of tiny little things from over 400 million years ago is scarce, some might say. And this fossil is of a millipede-like myriapod. So a millipede relative, but not completely millipede. And they were first estimated to live in the late Silurian, but then were recalculated to the early Devonian, the following period. For the sake of this video, they're in the middle. Okay? Paleontology drives me crazy sometimes. But it's not crazy to assume that other millipedes that we don't have fossils of were alive before them, especially with trace fossils found in Prototaxites, their little footprints, that suggest these early land residents were calling the fungus home. Pneumodesmus pneumony looked like a pretty typical millipede, even though it wasn't. But this fossil had a very important feature, openings all over its exoskeleton called spiracles. These are a network of tiny tubes that allow air to diffuse into the bodies of myriapods and insects, part of their respiratory system. Its mechanism is very different from from the respiratory systems that we have and are familiar with. And with the way this mechanism works, higher oxygen concentrations can lead to larger bodies. See where I'm going with this? Yeah. 
these things got big. Millipedes hold another record, the largest invertebrate to ever walk on land, that we know. These massive millipedes belong to the genus Arthropleura and were able to get up to nine feet long. They were alive during the Carboniferous period, which you might remember is when the Tully monster was swimming around in the oceans. The Carboniferous period is most well known for its higher oxygen concentrations, about 35% compared to the 21% that we have today. This is due to the massive trees that finally came around and pumped more oxygen into the atmosphere. And this had a profound impact on the land invertebrates, specifically the myriapods and insects who are fueled by these oxygen levels diffusing into their bodies. So, like the giant Arthropleura, there were other animals like the giant dragonfly, Meganeura, who had a three foot long wingspan. But obviously nothing in nature is cut and dry, so for Arthropleura, their diet of nuts and seeds was probably a more significant factor in the size of their bodies. A little bit of both. And this pattern of oxygen affecting body size is not true for other animals, like the megafauna that existed during the Ice Age and other prehistoric periods. Those all had to do with other factors. And although we don't have giant millipedes admiring Renaissance artwork, we do have species that are absolutely worth mentioning. Like this hot pink bitch, the pink dragon millipede. They were only first discovered in 2007 in Thailand, and they're about three centimeters long. And their coloration is a bold choice, and a very telling one. It's an example of a posomatic coloration, which is essentially colors that act as a warning signal, because these things are packing heat. Hydrogen cyanide. They produce hydrogen cyanide as a defense mechanism. You're probably thinking, this must be an outlier. Cyanide producing millipedes must be an outlier. They're part of an order where this is just typical, called polydesmida. Polydesmida? I think polydesmida. Desmida. It consists of about 3,500 species that are just known for their noxious chemical production. Some do hydrogen cyanide, others do formic acid, and it's released from pores all over their body when threatened. Depending on the species, it'll either leak out or spray everywhere, which is just fucking insane. None of them have the power to seriously harm a human, that we know of, but it will burn and blister you. And it does have the power to kill birds and other predators. Also, fun fact, hydrogen cyanide smells like toasted almonds. So if you're holding a millipede and suddenly you smell toasted almonds, you gotta go, which is a problem for me. I will go in any direction I smell toasted almonds coming from. Maybe with a little coconut, you know, throw it into some ice cream goddamn masterpiece. And as far as we know, there is only one millipede species that reigns true to their name, and scientists only found it last year. It was described in December of 2021. Its scientific name is Eumillipedes persephone, and it has 1,000 306 legs on 330 segments. If you do the math real quick, you'll realize they're missing about 14 legs from the standard form of four legs per segment. But with that many legs, you're bound to get something messed up in there. And 1300 legs sounds like this thing would be huge, but it's less than a millimeter wide and about 100 millimeters long. And they're not born with that many segments. They continuously add them as they develop, like a typical snake IO experience. And they were found on the only continent you would expect all wild shit to come from. Australia. And I think, actually, I know this allows us to leave with the conclusion that there are more legs on this planet than eyes. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and are walking away with a newfound respect for these little guys. Next time, I'll be telling you about a phenomenon that horrifies me to my core. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it, and if you want to keep up with my daily short form content, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok. But for now, stay curious. The world has a lot for us to learn. See ya!